Fed says China's real estate troubles could spill over to the U.S. Stresses in China's real estate sector could strain the Chinese financial system uh, with possible spillovers to the United States, the Federal Reserve said Monday in its financial stability report released twice a year. The nexus of the Fed's concern is that China's real estate activity is slowing, but the developers have large debts, and some of them, like Evergrande, which we've been talking about here for over a month now, uh, are diversified into other areas of the economy, said Paul Christopher, U.S.-based head of global market strategy at Wells Fargo Investment Institution, uh, Institute. The bulk of the report discussed domestic U.S. financial conditions and the anal and analysts downplayed the significance of the Fed's comments on China real estate. Real estate. Now, I uh, am of the belief that, uh, yeah, it might not necessarily sink us all at once. Uh, if, you know, if they completely go belly up and, and you know, companies like, especially Evergrande, because they, they control such a large portion of uh, the Chinese real estate market. But uh, I do think that it's going to, sp it will absolutely spill over. And depending on how it is handled, it absolutely could start to uh, become a strain on other uh, areas of, uh, the, the you know their economy affecting our economy and the rest of the world. Uh, we have a couple other articles here, real quick. Evergrande faces biggest payment test yet as grace period ends. Uh, China Evergrande Group is facing its biggest payment test since uh, since signs of liquidity crisis emerged uh, at the firm five months ago. Uh, investors are waiting to see <clears throat> to see the embattled. <laughs> Excuse me. Embattled developer make coupon payments totaling $148.1 million for three uh, for three dollar bonds before the end of the 30 day grace periods Wednesday. Uh, Evergrande missed the initial interest deadlines last month. Bloomberg compiled data show. Uh, yeah, compiled data show. Uh, the due date looms as credit market. Uh, stress spreads beyond China's junk-rated builders. High, uh, higher quality dollar bonds are suffering their worst sell-off in months as investors grow increasingly concerned about the impact on larger property firms and the broader economy. While there's no indication that Evergrande will miss the payment, any such development uh, could also trigger cross-default clauses among the builders' $19.2 billion of outstanding dollar notes and give creditors more room to negotiate. Evergrande, of course, did not uh, immediately respond to a comment. Uh, and then Evergrande, one last article here, Evergrande raises uh, $144 million as it sells down stake in Hang 10 Networks. Um, they, let's see, raised about uh, $144 million uh, by further selling down at stake of the internet company Hang 10 uh, network groups or networks group as it faces a uh, cascading series of interest payments on its offshore debt. Evergrande sold 530 million shares in a series of sales since November 4th, reducing its stake in the Hong Kong based Hang 10 from 26.55% to 20.82%. According to regulatory fi filings in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, the world's most indebted developer, Evergrande held a majority stake in Hang 10 as recently as January, but has significantly reduced its stake in a recent, uh, recent months as part of a series of asset sales to try to manage its one point, uh, it's $308 billion uh, in total liabilities. So yeah, no, it's, uh, it's good to see that they are taking this serious, you know, continuing to take this seriously, selling things down uh, according to, Again, according to these reports, I know some of the comments that I get, you know, talk about, oh, you know, we haven't seen, you know, that you can't believe anything that they're saying. Well, if you can't, the way I see it is like, if I can't believe anything, then why even report on it at all? That, you know, I, I'd love to know the reason because um, if they're not in like, if there's no reason to report on it, then there's no reason to say that they're in battle. They should just be like, hey, everything's cool. Everything's fine. Everything's going the way it's supposed to be going. Well, 
great. <laughs> if, if that's the way it is, then there is no news to report on. Um, so I, you know, will continue to monitor this, uh, but it is in my eyes, good to see that at least somebody other than a guy on YouTube, uh, you know, regardless of all the experience that I have, uh, you know, has pointing, been pointing out that like, Hey, this could really be a big, uh, problem for the rest of the world. And one final story I want to, uh, it's not Evergrande related, uh, necessarily, but it is China related in the urea shortage threatens South Korea's transport uh, energy, uh, energy industry. So South Korea is flying a military oil tanker to Australia this week to airlift 27,000 liters of urea solution used in diesel vehicles and factories to cut emissions amid a dire uh, shortage threatening to stall commercial transport and industries. Approximately 2 million diesel vehicles, mostly cargo trucks, are required by government to use this additive. I'm going to talk more about this, but the reason I wanted to bring this up here is because uh, diesel vehicle drivers have started panic buying urea after uh, China's customs last month introduced a new export requirement, effectively halting exports in order to boost supplies to the domestic market. Nearly 97% of South Korea's urea imports came from China between January and September, trade ministry said. So I'm going to do a separate video about that. In fact, I'll, I'll link that up here uh, talking about this because I, I want to go deeper into it. But uh, it's kind of uh, scary because when I looked up uh, how much the U.S. imports urea for diesel trucks, uh, the diesel uh, DPF fluid or DEF fluid, uh, diesel emission uh, fluid. They, uh, we, we, like, uh, as of 2019, at least we had imported, uh, somewhere it's, if, if the data I found off of, I forget what the name of the site was, but if the data I found, it, it looks like we import about two, like two thirds of the amount that we use, uh, here in the country. So, uh, not good. Uh, if China's, you know, I don't, I couldn't easily find where that was being imported from. Uh, but apparently Russia is one of them. And like I said, I'll talk more about this uh, in that other video that I'll link up, up here.